Great, those are my slides. Um, so I'm delighted to be here. Um, good evening, or good morning, wherever this talk finds you. Um, I'm here to present to you Accordion, a trainable simulator for long-term interactive systems. And this is joint work with Ed Shamalahi, uh, Justin Basilico, Eve Raymond, and Tony Jabara. Um, so satisfaction in interactive systems takes many forms. So whether it's you know, streaming movies or music or online content such as books or um, e-commerce, uh, things like web search. Um, what they all have in common is uh, that a user will initiate the interaction and decide, the user will decide how many times to, to interact you know, over a long period of time. Um, and uh, you know, algorithms succeed or don't succeed based on that criteria over the long term. Um, and I characterize this as what I call the interaction flywheel. Um, so a user visits, um, they interact with the, the recommender system, and they're either satisfied or dissatisfied. And, and that satisfaction, broadly construed, is anything that can influence future visits. So um, parts of this problem have been well studied. So um, you know, recommender models look at um, how the interactions can be successful or, or not. Uh, there are various user models for determining user satisfaction based on uh, log, log data. Uh, but relatively less uh, work has been done on the, identifying the link between satisfaction and, and visits, or number of visits. So why is this important? So let me give you an example. So um, in algorithm development uh, over a system that has been developed already over a number of years, it's often hard to make a, a, a small improvement to, let's say, one component. So let's say we wanted to improve model one in this diagram. So model one is talking to a bunch of other models. Um, what we have con to contend with is that uh, the, the um, interaction with the user w w is the first uh, part we have to contend with, so how, how satisfied they are. And then uh, how that interaction will influence future visits in this kind of uh, dynamic system loop. And furthermore, uh, how the models themselves interact. So um, you know, model one could help or hinder model two, or vice versa. Uh, so this is really a complex e ecosystem. Now, uh, traditionally, uh, in existing work, um, you might treat it like a classification or a ranking problem. You take your, your data set, you feed it through model one, and you decide how good that is. Obviously, that, that misses out this uh, interaction loop. You might go a step further and, and build a simulator uh, over time uh, based on synthetic parameters. But the question is always, how close is the simulation to the real system on the left? So uh, with that in mind, uh, we propose Accordion as a trainable simulator of interaction flywheels. Um, so I'll take you through the, 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 uh, the idea in a moment, but let's just pause here for a moment. So there are several existing simulators, as I'm sure you're aware, um, and all of these, with the exception of Rexim and G, uh, are, are based on synthetic assumptions. Um, and they're all based on um, treating the problem as a kind of a Mark Markovian or Markov dynamical uh, MDP, Mark uh, Markov dynamic process. Um, so our point of departure is uh, that we're working continuous time, um, and we're directly addressing the, the number of visits or the, the number of interactions as a function of user satisfaction. So let's just start with the data. So um, the data set uh, that we'll consider in general is that uh, is a number of rows, n rows of, it, of data, where uh, each row has a timestamp t, a user u, an item i, and a reward r. So that's the outcome of the interaction. And ideally, what we want is for n to, to, to vary in this, uh, in this data set, um, which is generally not uh, directly um, expressed in the models that, that uh, are typically studied. So um, we, we uh, propose using a, mar uh, a marked Poisson process for this problem. Um, and the way it works is that um, a set of uh, timestamps are drawn from a Poisson process with some uh, intensity function lambda conditional on features x. So x will be a function of time here. So you, you give me a, a continuous timestamp, and I'll give you back a set of contextual features or you know, anything that captures something about the user um, or, the, or the item. And then the second stage is to decide the markings. So once you have the time and the using the item, uh, how do we decide what item was impressed and uh, what the outcome of the interaction was? And so the main goal of building a trainable simulator in this framework is to learn lambda 
and to learn M, the marking function. So let me just give you an intuition for what lambda is. So lambda represents uh, the intensity in the Poisson process. That can either be a constant over time, but it's more interesting to represent it as a, as a variable, as a function of time. And the intuition is that the area under the curve for any subinterval um, represents the expected number of um, events within that time interval. Um, so in this diagram, the green dots are observed events. And uh, for non-overlapping intervals, the number of events is assumed to be a draw from an independent Poisson distribution. So um, why is that good? So um, it, it leads to the superposition property which uh, says that if U and V are separate draws from different Poisson processes, then their union will be a draw from another Poisson process with the sum of the intensities. And that's pretty cool because uh, it leads to modularity and interpretability. So modularity because um, we can represent an overall intensity, that would be like the red line here, uh, as a sum, just a simple sum of a bunch of different intensities over time. And we're free to design you know, different phenomena to, to build into that. Um, and interpretable because um, if we train this on, on data in the end-to-end -end way that, that I recommend, then um, we, we can, uh, it helps us to isolate which phenomena are at play for, for different times. So uh, to go back to the interaction flywheel, um, what we have is that we can represent that as a uh, graphical model of a dynamical system. Um, so the uh, the red line uh, indicates the relationship between the state and the uh, impressions that we observe in the data set. Um, the green line indicates um, how we get from the state and the recommendation to the outcome of the interaction. And then the, the blue lines represent how this all affects uh, visit time. Um, so what's kind of cool about this is that there are actually an infinite number of potential visit times, but obviously for any finite uh, draw of data, we have a finite number of nodes from which we can train the model. Uh, and again, um, the shaded nodes, everything is shaded here, so everything is observed. What's unknown is the, the functions that map the, the, the uh, uh, variables to each other. So you know, we're interested in learning lambda primarily, as well as m. Um, and I'll just mention, actually, that the architectural details uh, will be in the paper. You can find more details about that. Um, let me just pause for a moment to discuss training which is uh, very interesting. So um, we take a maximum likelihood approach for the simulator, um, and for a Poisson process, it has an intuitive uh, kind of decomposition. The first term in that uh, likelihood, it represents uh, the fact that we want the intensity to be high at the observed timestamps, conditional on the features. And the second term can be seen as a kind of a regularizer, like a natural regularizer. It says um, we can't make lambda infinite everywhere, um, we have to uh, penalize by the area under the total curve. So you might think, well, let's just apply SGD, stochastic gradient descent, to this. Um, let's take a single data point or a mini batch um, and then just uh, treat that as though it were the, the objective for the whole data set and then follow noisy gradients like you would normally do. The problem with this is that the second term has not been made any easier. Um, so it still is, a, is an area under the entire intensity curve um, which actually depends on features which features at time points that were never actually observed. So if your, if your featureization function x is uh, kind of high dimensional or, or uh, takes any sort of time, um, you, you don't get any benefit from applying SGD. So in the paper, we describe an approximate objective which evaluates uh, lambda and the gradients of lambda at only the sample times. Um, and in the paper, we, we show that that yields a uh, lower bound in expectation on the true objective. Um, when and under some certain conditions which can uh, always be met by rescaling the, the time scale. So in our experiments, we applied accordion to two different data sets. The first is a public data set called ContentWise, um, which is an observational data set um, of movie recommendations. Um, and we also looked at a Netflix internal data set, which was experimental in the sense that it comes from an A-B test where we have uh, different, different configurations of the recommender, and then we randomly assigned users to, to those different cells uh, in a kind of experimental fashion. Um, and so both of these, so the first one yields a data set of 98 days, and the second one of 28 days. So as we saw earlier in the session, um, Boltzmann exploration is a, is a typical way to add exploration to, uh, to your recommender system. 
It's kind of hard to evaluate offline because it requires un unrolling the, the dynamical system, uh, which is it's difficult to do. We, we applied accordion to this. So the left-hand side is the full accordion. On the right-hand side, um, we have disabled the, the connection between satisfaction and visits and just assumed a homogeneous number of visits. So you can see that um, we get a much stronger signal about the optimal um, inverse temperature parameter, so that controls expiration of Boltzmann expiration. We get a much stronger signal uh, with the full accordion than with uh, disabling uh, number of visits. So I'll just close out by describing an offline A-B test uh, framework that, that we uh, propose. So to do an offline A-B test with simulation, Ideally, we want to change just one thing and leave everything else constant. You know, that's the ideal experiment uh, with any kind of complex ecosystem. So starting on the right, we have our target metrics uh, for, the, for the new proposed system, and then the controlled metrics, which would be the existing system. And as you can see, these come from simulations from Accordion. Um, and these simulations come from trained components. So the policies are all components that are trained on real data, whether that's content-wise or um, the Netflix data. Um, and there's only one change. So um, in the target cell, uh, H is being applied with everything else held constant. And in the control cell, only pi 1 is applied instead of H. So we change that one thing. Uh, and when we do that, we can uh, do kind of an offline A-B test. So the, the left-hand side, so, so in each of these three plots, um, they each represent a different metric. The left-hand side uh, bar represents the true signal from a, an expensive, time-consuming A-B test. Uh, the middle plot is, um, sorry, the middle bar is uh, the result that accordion gives you, the prediction, offline. Uh, and then the right-hand bar is what you would get with normalized IPS. So that's a standard uh, counterfactual offline approach that uh, makes very strong assumptions around the independence between rewards. So, um, you know, commensurate with, that, with those strong assumptions, you can see that norm IPS will uh, overestimate drastically the, the number of, uh, uh, the number of uh, positive interactions per user, um, and actually will give no signal whatsoever for the number of visits or the number of impressions, because n is always assumed fixed for, um, you know, IPS-type methods. Um, but uh, accordion can give us a directional signal, uh, both for the, the positive interactions, but also um, uh, number of visits and number of uh, total in, uh, unique impressions. So it, it's some additional signal for offline experiments. So thanks very much for listening. I wanted to summarize. So visit modeling is crucial to understanding the interaction flywheel. We proposed accordion, which is a Poisson process simulator for interactive systems. And experiments show that simulations are sensitive to downstream effects for different expiration settings and uh, could help be helpful in offline A-B tests. So thanks very much for listening, and uh, we'll be open to any questions. Thank you very much. We have time for a few questions. There's one online. I'm asking, can accordion be used for model-based reinforcement learning methods? In particular, does it maintain a user state? It does contain a user state. Um, if the person who asked the question wants to write a paper over that, I'd be very excited. Um, I'm interested in the topic too. I think um, as we explore interactive systems, whether it's bandits or RL, we really need um, these kind of si offline signals if we're to avoid having to do everything online, which could be you know, harmful to users and obviously very expensive. OK, thanks. Right. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you if you considered using uh, Hox processes instead of Poisson processes, uh, maybe for the future? Yeah, actually one of the components is a Hawks process. So, um, if, so in our kind of simple setup, if a user streams something, there is an unknown decay and peak for every item, and we learn those decays and peaks. And uh, that's a very powerful thing. So you know, comp compare that to some of the other intensities, which will have a bunch of parameters in a, in a feed-forward neural network. Mm -hmm. Super simple, super powerful. Yeah, so right. yeah, I really like the Hawks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, we have one more question here from the audience online. Do you think the simulation can be used to assess long-term fairness? That's a great question. Um, I'd be very interested in exploring that uh, within this framework. Um, yeah. Any more questions here? Here's a technical one. I'll just read it out. <laughs> 
What about negative binomial for the variance? Yeah, so um, uh, I guess this takes us down the avenue of, I guess, the Poisson has a, is, a, you know, there may be an argument for using an over-dispersed over Poisson distribution, so you could control variance separate from mean. So a drawback of uh, doing just a, a pure Poisson process is that uh, the higher the intensity, the higher, higher the variance. Um, so I, I guess that there's a connection there to the negative binomial. Okay. Oh, there are two more interesting ones. Is the code open sourced? Are you planning to? Yes, we're planning to release the, the code, yeah. Okay, and one is, uh, do you see an advantage of organizing Rex's challenges around this with this, um, with this framework? Yes, um, I have to make sure my excitement doesn't get, doesn't get ahead of reality, but um, I think it would be wonderful to, to use simulators to you know, improve communication between you know, academic research and industrial research. All right, wonderful. Thank you very much again. Thank you.